one way to think about it is just kind of basic math. Like if you just look at the numbers, if you were able to improve by 1% each day for an entire year, and those gains compound, you would end up 37 times better at the end of the year. And if you were to get 1% worse, you would whittle yourself almost all the way down to zero. What's interesting here is that everybody wants a transformation, right? Everybody wants a radical improvement, we want rapid success, but we fail to realize that small habits and little choices are transforming us every day. Did you know that if you improve just 1% every day, you'll end up 37 times better by the end of the year? Mind blowing, right? This is the magic of the 1% improvement rule, a principle explained in the game-changing book Atomic Habits by James Clear. So, are you intrigued to discover how a single percentage point can alter your destiny? And more importantly, are you ready to take that tiny step to achieve big dreams? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to After the 925. This channel is all about helping you break free from the 95 rat race and live your best life. We are here to empower you to take control of your financial future through smart investments, profitable side hustles, and money management strategies that work. So, if you're ready to say goodbye to the everyday grind and hello to financial freedom, then hit that subscribe button and join our community today. In today's video, we'll dive into why tiny adjustments in your daily routine can lead to massive life improvements. We're talking about the science of habits, mind-blowing techniques like implementation intention, and how you can set up your life for success with habit stacking. 1% rule. Have you ever considered how minor tweaks can shake up your life's trajectory? No, I'm not talking about dramatic U-turns or life-altering decisions. Just minor, teeny tiny 1% adjustments. It sounds almost too good to be true. Well, James Clear, in his game-changing book Atomic Habits, spills the tea on this. Let's say you commit to becoming 1% better daily for a year. It doesn't sound like much at first glance, but here's where the magic happens. At the end of that year, you won't be just a little better. You'll be a jaw-dropping 37 times better. But wait, there's a cautionary story here. If you slide 1% daily, you're not just slipping but plummeting towards ground zero. The same math that can elevate you to new heights can drop you down faster than a phone battery on 1%. And you might be sitting there asking, is this for real? Absolutely. James Clear even serves up an example that nails this point home. He uses the analogy of a flight from Los Angeles to New York City to illustrate his point. Imagine if the pilot veered just 3.5 degrees to the south, you'd find yourself in Washington DC instead of New York City. Such a minor adjustment might go unnoticed during takeoff, but it could divert you hundreds of miles from where you meant to go by the time you land. Habits and Identity In his book, James says, Success is the product of daily habits, not once-in-a-lifetime transformations. However, do you ever find yourself stuck in a bad habit, hitting a wall every time you try to break free? Yeah, been there, done that. But what if I told you you've been tackling it all wrong? James Clear delves deep into this problem in his second chapter, How Your Habits Shape Your Identity, and Vice Versa and it's an eye-opener. He says, bad habits repeat themselves again and again, not because you don't want to change, but because you have the wrong system for change. When we talk about change, it's like peeling an onion. It happens layer by layer. You've got three essential layers, outcomes, processes, and identity. First up, we've got the outer layer, outcomes. This is where we're all about hitting targets. Drop 10 pounds, write a novel, and win that award. Sound familiar? Yeah, that's all well and good, but it's sort of a one and done deal. Onto the middle layer, processes. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. We're talking routines, systems, and all those daily grind activities like hitting the gym or keeping your workspace clean. This isn't just a one-time feat. This is where habits make their home. But here comes the real kicker, the innermost layer, identity. This is the core, the motherboard, the command center of your change. It's all about your beliefs, about the world, others, and especially yourself. Flip a switch here, and you're a whole new person. You're probably thinking, which layer should I focus on? And here's where James Clear gets real with us. Each layer has its moment in the sun. Outcomes are excellent for achievements, processes for habits, and identity for a lasting transformation. 
As he puts it, outcomes are about what you get, processes are about what you do, and identity is about what you believe. The philosophy of the book is that we do not rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. And so often we're ambitious and set these, you know, uh, lofty goals for ourselves and we wonder why doesn't it work out? Yeah. And it's because we don't have a system behind it, we don't have the habits behind the goal. Many individuals face challenges when attempting to alter their habits because they tend to concentrate on their desired achievements, rather than considering the person they aim to become during the habit-building process. When establishing enduring habits, it is more advantageous to start by transforming one's identity instead of solely focusing on outcomes. Without considering our beliefs and thought systems, merely setting goals and creating processes doesn't result in a shift in our self-perception. This outdated self-concept can undermine our progress. As James Clear points out, the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes part of your identity. It's one thing to say I'm the type of person who wants this. It's something very different to say I'm the type of person who is this. Hence, it can be affirmed that genuine behavior change commences with a transformation in one's self-concept. When we nurture, embrace, and fully integrate a specific identity, we are more inclined to engage in actions and uphold habits that align with that identity. This phenomenon has its merits and drawbacks. As individuals, we often unthinkingly conform to the conventions and expectations tied to our identities, making it challenging to deviate from established patterns and develop new habits. Some instances of this include statements like, I have a poor sense of direction, I'm not a morning person, I struggle with remembering people's names, I'm perpetually tardy, I'm not proficient with technology, and I'm not adept at math. So, how can we break free from these constraints and evolve into the individuals we aspire to be? What steps can we take to modify our habits? James Clear outlines two key strategies, determining the kind of person we wish to become and demonstrating it through small victories. Building better habits. Now, let's get real. Changing habits is not exactly a walk in the park. You dive head first into something, full of enthusiasm, and then, whoosh, you burn out faster than a shooting star. Sounds familiar? Don't worry, James Clear's got some life hacks for you. We're talking about his book, Atomic Habits, which is like a cheat code for becoming a better you. Now, James lays it out with four easy to remember laws, or as he calls them, the four stages of habit formation. Q, craving response, and reward. First up, the cue. Imagine you're walking down the street and you catch a whiff of fresh pizza. Your brain goes, hey, that smells like heaven. That smell is your cue. But a cue is nothing without a craving. When you smell that pizza, your stomach starts to do the macarena. You're craving the cheesy, melty goodness. This craving is basically your brain saying, dude, I need that in my life. Then comes the response. That's you marching into that pizza place and placing an order. Your brain is like a master puppeteer, pulling strings to make you act. It believes that chowing down on that pizza slice will make you feel like you've won the lottery. And finally, the reward. Ah, the first bite. Cheese, sauce, crust, all harmonizing in your mouth. That satisfaction you feel? That's the reward. You've now built this mental expressway linking the smell of pizza to this feeling of bliss. Now, these four stages, cue, craving, response, and reward, are more than just buzzwords. They're the four pillars holding up the skyscraper of your habits. James Clear even gave them their laws, rules you can apply to ensure you're building rock-solid habits. Let's unpack them. Let's say you want to start a new habit, say drinking more water. The first law, make it obvious, suggests that cues are your best friend. These cues prompt your brain to kickstart a behavior. So how do you do that? Well, imagine placing water bottles all around your house and office, so you're visually nudged to drink. Moving on to the second law, make it attractive. The key is to couple your new habit with something you inherently enjoy or crave. Imagine promising yourself a swift scroll through Twitter or a sip of your favorite coffee only after that glass of water, you're creating an irresistible pull towards this new habit by tying it to something you're already fond of. All right, on to the third law, make it easy. No one likes complicated, and that's what this law capitalizes on. To stick with this new habit, 
you've got to remove as many roadblocks as possible. It's not about taking the easy way out, it's about making the new habit effortlessly part of your daily routine. That way, every time you show up, you're affirming the new identity you're working to build. Lastly, the fourth law, make it satisfying, is all about instant gratification. Let's face it, we humans love immediate rewards. Sure, the paycheck comes bi-weekly and grades at the end of a semester, but what if you could create micro-rewards along the way? This immediate satisfaction becomes the fuel to keep you going. Implementation, intention, and habit stacking. Favorite things about noticing, one of my favorite strategies for discussing it, it's called implementation intentions. Many people think that they lack motivation when what they really lack is clarity. They think that they need to get more motivated, that they need willpower in order to execute on a habit. If I just felt like writing, if I just felt like meditating, if I felt like working out, then I would do it. But in fact, they don't have a plan for it, and so they wake up each day thinking, I wonder if I'll feel motivated to write today. I wonder if I'll feel motivated to work out today. But instead, you can take the decision-making out of it by explicitly stating when, where, and how you want James Clear reveals a secret weapon in Atomic Habits. Implementation intentions. Sounds fancy, right? but it's super simple. This method asks you to map out your new habits, when, where, and how. Let's say you wanna start meditating. Instead of vaguely saying, I'll start meditating, you'd specify, I will meditate for five minutes right after I wake up. Clear insists that by nailing down these details, you're giving yourself a roadmap that makes stumbling off course less likely. The magic sentence to remember is, when situation X occurs, I will execute response Y. But what if I told you there's another ninja trick up James Clear's sleeve? That's where habit stacking comes in. This technique is like building a tower of habits. You take a habit you already have and stack another on top of it. So, say you're already a champ at brushing your teeth every morning. Now piggyback a new habit onto it, like cranking out 10 push-ups right after you finish brushing. The beauty of habit stacking is that the when and where are already built into your existing habit, which makes remembering to execute your new habit practically effortless. The formula to keep in mind here is, having performed daily habit, I will do new habit. And finally, thanks for tuning in to After the 925. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on financial freedom, smart investments, and profitable side hustles. And as always, don't forget to let us know what you think. As we wrap up, what's the one tiny habit you'll change today that will make you unrecognizable a year from now? Comment down below. We'd love to know.